Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe and Isaiah from uh, The Automator. And today, you know, we often hear this question, is auto hotkey safe, right? And uh, That's right. it's one of those things like, well, maybe. <laughs> um, and the <laughs> other day, um, I saw this email. Why don't you go ahead and pull it up, Isaiah. Uh, yeah, sure. Talking about Man. these rats, um, uh, remote access Trojans, or what did you said something the other day, it was also called known something else, remote access. Yeah, uh, so... <laughs> Now we were talking uh, remote access tools. That's how I kn uh, I knew them back in the day. So uh, a long time ago, there were remote access tools, but now they're kind of like shifting the focus to being Trojans, right? But um, for us in in computers, a Trojan is a program that uh, is designed to look like something, but it is something else, right? So that's why um, we. We never called them like remote access Trojans because they were not actually pretending to be anything else. They were exactly tools for that. They were exactly just like uh, whenever you went ahead and downloaded them, it was just like a tool to connect to another computer and have access, remote access to it, right? But now they are kind of like presenting them as Trojans. And uh, that means that probably this, this, the program for you looks like a notepad or, you know, any program, like a normal program in your computer, but they're really something else. And maybe that's the reason why they are calling it that now. Now, what I noticed is that they are actually in the news, putting out a hotkey there, uh, you know, like the ongoing based, uh, the ongoing out of hotkey based malware attacks. So, uh, there is like a very bad press associated with auto hotkey. And that's because the people like us that use it for our personal projects that have nothing to do with attacking people, uh, we don't have a lot of press coverage, right? We don't say like, oh, look, this guy created a very amazing tool to, you know, organize your computer. Nobody talks about that. <laughs> so, so I have a Google like search, you know, always running for auto hotkey. And right, so yeah. once a month, maybe twice a month, I'll get a, a hit. And almost always it's on the, like, a, oh, another virus Something. is found and auto hotkey is right. a the blood. I'm like, right. yeah, whoever said, you know, there's no such thing as bad press is did, clearly doesn't know what they're talking about because right. the, yeah it gives that now auto hotkey a, a, a black guy when it does so many more and the vast majority of people using auto hotkey you know are not doing they are things. not doing that so that's the thing so basically what is going on and, and and the funny thing is that creates the idea that anything written in auto hotkey might be a malware but the problem is, and this is the interesting thing, this can happen to any other language. There's a lot of bad tools reading in C, C++, in Python. They, they have a lot of tools that are written in other languages. It is not the language itself is the person who created the tool, right? I totally. Agree. Now, the difference being to me is auto hockey is so tied into Windows. It's so powerful and it's so easy to learn how to do this is why I think often, you know, actually you hear about it from auto hockey because it takes a little effort in auto hockey to do some of this stuff, right? And you can, right. it's like the force, right? You can use it for good or bad, right? It's just depending right, on how right. you're using it. Now so, that, that boils down to the main point. Like it is just like, if you're going to run any program, it is not either a auto hockey script or anything. It is based on whether you trust the source where you got it or not. If it is a, a page that you just found, right? It is not a good idea to run an executable file from a page that you just found. It's better to get it from somebody that you site. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in general. But and that's which, the, uh -huh. Sorry, let me interrupt you real quickly, but, but it's kind of ironic, right? I mean, this is exactly why we stopped compiling our scripts and having them on our website because... I was just going to say that. Software. Yeah, right, I was fine. just going to say that. Like, that's the reason why. We just give you the source. You can read the freaking thing and see for yourself what they do, right? And that would be the best if, if software, and, and basically if people knew how to understand uh, software uh, code, most of them before running it, just take a quick look, just check for some things. And that's basically one of the things that we're going to talk about in a second, right? Yeah, the problem is some of them are thousands of lines long, right? Right, and that's what you... Yeah. That's the thing, the thing that I was going to point out. But in any case, before we dive into that, um, here we're taking a look at people who have uncovered like an ongoing malware campaign. So that is, that is uh, something that is ongoing. And they say that it relies a lot of auto hotkey and so on. The funny thing is that the screen captures that they present are not in auto hotkey. 
that is actually visual basic scripting so as i mentioned it's not exactly the the language itself this screen capture is not an auto hotkey script this is actually a different type of scripting language but anyways they can still do the same things right now in any case uh of course they tell you to be careful they tell and, and we would recommend you to read the script and as you just mentioned like okay what do i do when i have a, a, a somebody i want to run a file like this this script is very cool like uh for example the windows snipping tool that we have this right. is a very cool script I, I just want to take screenshots of my screen very easily and i just want to do this and that but when i go ahead and take a look at the scripting code it's like 1000 2000 lines of code right. and the includes so you have to read those too that's where it becomes a little bit annoying and you will not be able to read them all and you will not be able to catch some things. That's the reason why we created kind of like a small tool for that. And case in point here, as you can see on the screen, they mention a very specific command in this example, file install. Yes. Which, right. it, now that's the thing is, in what we realized when we were discussing this was like, you know, not all commands and not a hockey or functions are, are the same like vulnerability, like things that they can do. Some of them are much, could be much more powerful, I think is the right way to say it, because it'd be used for very, you know, fine purposes and sometimes really bad purposes. So yeah. we went through and ranked the more powerful, the ones that might be used for bad and scored right. them I mean, and present them in a GUI for you. Right, exactly. We're going to take a look at that in a second, but let me go ahead and um, mention this. Uh, this is what I mentioned at the beginning, a legitimate application yep. to disguise their intentions. So that's the reason why they're calling it Trojans, right? Because they are actually putting them right next to something normal, right? Now, this file install command, usually it's not a very big deal, but what, what's the deal with it, right? So you download one file, right? You download one executable, but the problem with the file install command for our hotkey is that the one file is bundled with a lot of other files that you don't know. And they use the file install command to go ahead and put them into different directories. And you don't even notice that they did that. So that's the reason why they're targeting that. And that is the reason why our tool also does that. So our tool, as usual, you can go ahead and uh, download it from our website and you will see all this, all the, the, URL the, the courses, it. right? So the URL for it um, is here on the automator and the name of the script is HK script scanner. What it helps you do is actually go ahead and uh, feed a script onto it. Like I just go ahead and open a script and it, this not, it, it's staying on Chrome for some reason. Oh, okay. Let me go ahead and switch that real quick. I think it is because I was not sharing the whole screen. There we an go. application. Right. So here we go. Now this little script that I'm going to go ahead and um, open, if you take a look at it, it is a very big script. You will see it in a second. Let me see. Hold on. Ah, okay. Didn't want to open. So this is, by the way, uh, a four thousand lines of code script. So I wouldn't want. Uh, I wouldn't tell you like go ahead and read it, right? No. <laughs> and that is without uh, counting out the lines that are included from other files. Mm -hmm. So that's for five thousand lines of code the script itself and more lines of code from other included files that you might not see right away. So the tool itself, what it does is that it goes ahead and reads the file and not only reads the file, it reads all the included files as well. And you can tell that it is doing that by here in, in the file column, it tells you from which included file this function shows up right now. Uh, this uh, little tool uh, has some visual aid to guide you through the most important things that you should take a look at. Uh, and, you know, with the colors, you can say, okay, those are not that, you know, problematic and so on. But uh, just to tell you, this tool is not meant to tell you what is bad and what is good. That's not what it does. It just tells you some things that you should go ahead and take a look at because they might not be a bad thing, right? So in this case, the script installs three files. But if you take a look at it, it's the same file. Now, the only thing that you have to do is go ahead and take a look at what that file is. In this case, that is a backup for the AutoHotKey executable, the AutoHotKey L. 
that my script uses to, in case that your computer does not have auto hotkey installed, it uses that to go ahead and uh, run some code uh, for the live code execution. But yeah, you can you have a context here to take a look at what it is. And if you are kind of curious, it tells you which line number it is on the script. So you can go ahead and take a look at the script and go there and take a look at that. So from 5,000 lines of code, there's only 297 items that you could just go ahead and take a look at. And most of them are not that, you know, bad, right? You wanted to say something? No, I was going to say, you know, we would love to have been able to, to set it where you click it and it'll jump you to that um, line of the script. That's, However, that's gonna we don't be, know what editor yeah. you're using and, and it just... Yeah, you know, we're going we're gonna to take a look at that later on, but yeah, we... On the left-hand side, you know, that's where we yes. also break things down to the different classes, directives, functions, um, includes... Yes, this actually allows you to have a very quick overview of how the, the script is outlined whether it has many classes, if it has some directives that you might want to take a look at, uh, some DLL calls. I do like to kind of like always have an eye on the DLL calls because DLL calls are usually used to access uh, very low level uh, functions from the Windows, uh, uh, particularly from Windows or from a malicious DLL or something like that. And you might want to always take a look at what kind of DLL calls are being made by the script. So uh, this tool right away puts you in a position to take a look at what it does, like any DLL calls that it makes. And again, it tells you the line number. So if you want to go ahead and take a look at the context more in depth, you can go ahead and jump there. You have your functions there. If you could go ahead and take a look at what the script mainly does and your hot keys your hot strings you know how many files were included and so on in this case again we tell you what the potential risk is so if it is in, the, the file install command the problem with it is that it's going to install files without you noticing so that's the potential risk on it. And that's the reason why you should take a look at it. We give you a little context, but you should take a look at the bigger context later on. But again, there's a lot of those functions that are usually used in normal situations. This numput and string put, they're used to access the memory and add information to the memory. Most of the times are used for something very simple. In this case, this is for screenshots. So they create a variable that adds some information to the memory about the screenshot that you're taking and so on. So usually it's not a problem. You just take a look at the context. If you know what is going on, then you just ignore them. That's not a problem. But there's a lot of things like running commands, running the com spec, which is the, the, the Windows uh, command prompt. Those are things that you might want to take a look at. What is going on? What is going on there? Why don't you show the uh, the cheat sheet as well for the if you're not familiar with what the types are, right? That's what right. We're... Exactly. Yeah. So so all of this it gives you kind of like a very quick overview. You can go ahead and take a look at the the most important things. But if you don't understand what the problem is with you know uh, collecting information, you just go ahead and here here click here on the help and hit the keyword information. That is actually going to tell you the keywords that the script actually is targeting and why it is being targeted. So even if you are not very big in security and you don't understand why that might be a problem, then you have kind of like a basic information as to what the problem is. So why the rec rec command is not that uh, you know nice to find it in it? Well, because it is reading information about the Windows registry. And there are some things in the registry that are supposed to be kept private. So you might want to make sure, like for example, one of the things that is stored in your registry key is your Windows product key. It is actually encoded, it is actually hidden in some places, but there is a way to get the product key from there. So right. if you see that the script is reading the registry and it is in one of those places that has to do with Windows, you might want to say like, oh, hold on, wh wh why is this script doing that, right? <laughs> Before running it, not after you run it, right? So not after you ran it, just, just take a look at it before you do. Um, and again, every single one of the comments, uh, the, the commands that we take a look at has a, a small uh, description of what the problem might be, okay? So if you want to have a little bit more information on that, yeah, that's it. And then last, well, at least I think lastly, 
Um, if someone isn't, they get an executable, but they're not sure if it's written out a hotkey or not. Can you demonstrate real quickly how they can do a quick check? Yeah, that is fairly easy. Actually, uh, this you can do it with any with any editor. You can go ahead and grab an auto hotkey executable like this. Just drag it into your editor. It can be Notepad or whatever. In this case, I just tell it to op to open it here, and you will see a lot of gibberish, but it doesn't matter. Because what happens is that if you do a control F to find and look for auto hotkey, you will find a line around there that is going to say that this is the assembly and it is an auto hotkey assembly. And that would tell you right away that is an auto hotkey script. And usually the script itself, even if it is compiled, you can find it in plain text inside the executable as well. Often, so not always, right? Uh, that, that's when it is not when it is not compressed or something like that, right? So it is just like when you have a uh, a plain auto hotkey compiled script without being compressed, you might be able to find the information like this. Um, in other situations, you might need to decompile it. But this part here that tells you that it's an auto hotkey script, if you cannot read the, the, the plain text, then you will have to find the compiler, which we I, I assume you linked, right? So you have a link yeah, to below it. Below this on, video yeah. where the, the website is, um, we have a link on how to decompile um, at least some, right? The video is actually right, okay. right now, the current one is for how to protect your code. And I demonstrate right. in the video how to decompile, how to decompile it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember. Can peek inside a lot of them, but we're gonna we're gonna probably build an, that into the tool. So if you had an executable, you could drag it on here and with the new block, it would actually decompile it for you, right? Because right. you know, it's, yeah, it's, that would you know, be great. Yeah, because we, we want to double check if that right. thing is dangerous or not. And uh, if it is compiled, we would actually try to do the work to decompile it and show it for Because you. our script right now requires it to be decompiled, just a regular. Yes, audience. right now it's just for, for the script itself. It's just going to read the file and take a look at the commands and stuff. Now, in any case, there are a lot of uh, ways for people to try to obfuscate the script, but there is no way for them to use a command like DLL call function, like the DLL call. Right without right. calling it the DLL. So they cannot right. just simply hide those kind of things, yeah. right? right? So this is kind of like a very quick tool to give you an overview and give you a sense of how the script is at the moment. Uh, yeah. Most of the times you're not gonna get so many, uh, you know, <laughs> security flags here. But in any case, I think it is uh, safe to say that even if you see this as a high numbered uh, severity risk or something like that, it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It is no. just like, this is just something that you might something want to take interest. a look at. Right, you might want to take a look at it and see what it's doing. That's what the script is meant to do. And, and to your point, on average, like, I mean, granted there's there's auto hockey scripts out there that are 100,000 lines or more, right? But right. most scripts are like 100 lines, right? Or 200 Right, lines. right, right. So if right. you go ahead and grab any of our scripts, you, you're gonna find that they're not, there's just a few things, right. right? Yeah. Now, this is a script that adds to startup. Well, I'm not surprised to find something writing in the right. registry to the startup folder because right. that's what it says it does, right? But if you find a script that doesn't tell you that adds anything to the startup, and then you find it that it is doing that, then you're just like, okay, hold on, what, what are you doing here, right? right? But again, this is how most most of the times you might want to see you might see the script yeah. it's just very small it's very uh you know if it is like 500 lines of code there's not many things that are going to be found but if you find i think this tool is better for very large scripts if you're going to see for example automate my task or something like that which is a script that is not a small script i just want to make sure what it does then i would say like yeah go ahead and add it and verify it and again this is a script that even though it's a little bit bigger it is just 38 items in there that you might want right. to take a look at. Yeah. Um, in some case, a lot of DLL functions and uh, numput. When you go ahead and take a look at them, maybe nothing is going on, nothing out of, you know. But in some cases, it's good to take a look at it and be very mindful of what is going on, right? But and to your point, you know, it, it typically rolls back to who did you get it from? And where did they get it yes. from, right? You know, right. if you're the actual person that wrote it, 
you know, like when, when Isaiah says, well, I don't go and look, well, I wonder what he tried to put in here. No, I, I don't do that. No, <laughs> but, uh, no when, and that's the no. thing. When you, when you know the person, like you, you have gave me, you have gave, given me like, uh, I don't know, 40 scripts by now. And I have run all of them right. because I know how it is more or less uh, who wrote it, how, how he writes stuff. Uh, and, and, and I, and I see like, yeah, that's okay. But if you don't know, if you are not sure, and it is a very big script. You don't have the time to read it. Uh, or if you don't know um, out of hot key in general, then this might be a very good start. Just go ahead and plug it in and just take a look at it. Or you might even find someone who doesn't even know auto hockey, but they're kind of a programmer. You could give them this tool and just say, and tell hey, them, you, right? Yeah. They could understand the DLL calls, you know, like, like that. That's right. right? A lot that of these right. they, they could very quickly review it. And if they're new to auto hockey, looking at a 4,000 line script would take a lot of time. This can really help them. Yeah, that's right. Where they want to look. Um, one last point that I do want to mention, uh, we do target hotkeys on this uh, tool. And you might say like, what is the problem with the hotkey? Well, it's not the problem of the hotkey itself is how many hotkeys are being created. Because if they hotkey your whole keyboard, like they right. grab 101 keys, that might be used to go ahead and track uh your keystrokes and that is something that you might want to take a look at so any given script and actually the the 5000 line uh hot key uh, script that i showed a few minutes ago yep. uh this one when you go ahead and take a look at the hot keys it it actually just has uh let me see a couple yeah yeah just a couple of them like yeah i have like two six eight yeah ten ten hot keys more or less right <laughs> Well, in a very big script, you will not have like hundreds of very, hot keys, right? Yeah. It's, it's very weird. If you yeah. see that, go ahead and take a look at it. Go ahead and verify what, what those hot keys are doing because yeah. it is not common, right? And, and what we'll probably do over time, because I know that article also mentioned the host file, right? Editing the host oh, file. Yes. We might identify a couple things that are not, like he just mentioned here. It's not that there's one or two, but hey, when there's more than 15 hotkeys, you know, this is kind of yeah, a red just, flag. We right, might yeah. add some additional logic to this to say, look for these things. And before this menu comes up, it'll pop up and say, hey, here are a couple of things you really should pay attention to, right? Right, like, yeah. That editing <laughs> of that host file, like, yeah, that's a big, you know, thing. like, hold on, hold on. You know, you know what, that, that's not a good thing. Like uh, um, um, scheduling tasks. So if the script right. is not supposed to be scheduling anything, right. it would be very weird yeah. that it schedules uh, to run an executable every day or uh, in the next 10 hours. Yeah. Uh, those are suspicion, suspicious actions that I might want to say, like, hold on, uh, that, that's not the normal flow of this script. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> so yeah. as you guys who, who you know, do this stuff, you do it, you know, give us some feedback on other things you think we yes. should add to this. because. The one other thing we already plan to do is in one way, you know, mouse over, maybe double click and have that HTML, you know, have the definitions, you know, pop up of, for of you. That, like, yeah. Okay, this is why it matters. Um, and let you actually choose your language of preference, right? Because we'll translate those into different languages. Um, right, yeah. but, you know, other things that you're thinking of that, that would be helpful, you know, feel free to, to, to reach out, you know, comment on this video um, or email me and, uh, you know, we'll consider adding it in because I think this is a great script for people that are new to programming with AutoHotKey. Even those that aren't, like when you have a really big script, I don't want to look look at like like pullover macro creator, right? That thing's <laughs> ten thousand. That, that, yeah, that that should be huge. And then it is not in only a tool for people who are new. Even for me, who have been coding right. in, in a long time, I don't want to spend the time reading a very big script. Well, yeah, uh, you know. You would have to memorize every one of these commands and you know function call stuff to go. Well, hey, is this in here? And because otherwise, to your point, you'd have to read every line. You can't just search. Right. So this this helps say look for these. One, yeah. One interesting thing that we're gonna do as well. This uh, severity uh, scale that we have here is kind of like 
it's not like an objective scale. This is subjective. Yes. We are the ones that decided what we right. think is kind of like the most, you know, uh, uh, dangerous things. Right. But yeah. we are going to kind of make it so that you decide what is uh, more uh, important for points. you, right? right? And the way how we how we actually created it is already something that you can do uh, very easily because you can use any any uh, program that can open tap delimited files, right? And you just drag the file to it. And you will notice uh, that it, it's not going to do anything because that's how it goes. <laughs> <It's more important. laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> it was exactly right. Now, in any case, it is a tap delimited file. And you see this part where it says severity. You can change it to whatever you feel more comfortable with. So for example, if you don't care about uh, writing to the registry and stuff and you if you don't find it that you know big of a deal then you can just lower the severity to something like a six or something like that and that would be for you like a, an acceptable number uh, later on we're going to introduce that to the gui so you can do it directly from the gui but for, for now you can go ahead and modify the severity here or just change it in the actual text file itself right i mean this yeah you can do that yeah the, the one thing on the text file is that as it is tap delimited then everything is kind of like not in a very easy way to change it. But if it is just one of them that you want to change, right. then yeah, that would be easy. Um, in any case, this is something that you can do and you can add keywords yourself. So you just yeah. grab one and say like, you just add the keyword that you want. Uh, you can add additional information if you want, like the severity or, you know, the, the, the description of what it is or what it's doing. This is where doing. definitely having right. an Excel would help you make sure you Right, do. but in any case, you can do that. You can modify that really quickly. Right. Uh, but later on, we're gonna introduce that into the GUI itself so that you can do it without having to, you know, modify files manually like that. Yeah, we might even build in a tool like that would take that, what you added and have it, you know, hey, share it with us, right? So we can start. <laughs> yeah, that. yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that would be awesome. But in any case, I think this is a tool that um, uh, I think is good for you to go ahead and take a look at it. And again, this, the, the sources are there. If you want to modify, you can actually go ahead and uh, merge. We, we will have it on GitHub, so you could go ahead and make a pull request. And I will take a look at the code and just say, if, if that's a very good addition, a new feature that you added there, like, oh, well, welcome to it, right? <laughs> but we will take a look at it and... You know, we'll wait for your feedback. All right, man. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.